Well, I thought we'd been pissing down by now, so let's welcome in the rain today, guys, and bring it on. Because there's nothing better than a small challenge to start the day off with and make sure everybody's here for the right reason. A little bit of water, let's make it more fun, right? Remember when you were kids? It used to be fun playing in the rain. Let's do that today. Right guys, we're gonna, we're gonna start off with a minute silence. Now I wanna dedicate this. Brother, just turn that speaker around basically. Gonna dedicate this minute of silence to the frontline emergency workers and today, especially towards the Queensland Police. Now I want everyone to realise that around this country, other, other states are not so lucky to have cops like we do. Big Paul opened fire on their citizens last year. With, with lethal, lethal rounds, they call them less lethal. They're not non-lethal, they're less lethal. They were hitting people five metres away. We built a relationship with these guys, although they still, we, they, you know, they prosecute me from time to time. We built a respectful relationship and we're working, we're working to keep everyone here safe and the public safe. So guys, this is dedicated to the Queensland Police today. However, it's not dedicated to all of them because some of them are corrupt and some of them will try and shut us down no matter what they can. It's just their personal vendetta against us. This is dedicated to the Queensland Police who have lost their lives on the front line, truly serving the Australian people and the Queensland citizens. It's dedicated to them. It's dedicated to the fireys and the ambos. It's dedicated to the First Nations people that lost their lives defending their home from the invasion. It's dedicated to the Anzacs that lost their lives defending their home from the invasion. Although they were tricked and manipulated and they ended up just being pawns, they did it with the right intentions in the hearts. And this is a message to all the soldiers now. Drop your guns. Why are we involved in wars in overseas countries that have nothing to do with us and actually built on greed for land, power, and money. Without soldiers picking up guns, those pathetic cowards in the ivory towers would have to fight their own wars. Yeah. And they're all beta males. The weaklings. You can throw them down a set of steps and I'll be finished. I ain't condone violence, by the way. It's just a joke. Dedicate the minute silence to the Christians and the Muslims, to the low income earners and the high income earners. Dedicate the minute silence to the blacks and to the whites. I've dedicated to humanity, <clears throat> dedicated to all the humans and the high consciousness that we all share collectively. Please close your eyes, guys. Embrace nature and that breeze flowing on you. Let it empower you. That's why we are here today together. Envision the world where you want to live and where the future generations will be at peace, in happiness and in bliss.
Thank you, you beautiful people. I thought that was feedback, that noise you said. Well, guys, the plan for today is going to be much dependent on what happens within those walls. They might vote at 11 o'clock a.m. Or they might vote at 6 p.m. Or they might, might vote on Thursday. We don't know. We're going to have to see how we go. Hopefully, we'll get some confirmation from a couple of the boys in there with the suits on within an hour, and they might have a better idea of what's, what's happening. Um, it also depends on what you guys want to do. If they have the discussion and vote, and it's all done by 1 p.m., we'll gauge the feeling. We'll see what happens first. If the vote gets blocked, we're going to have a party, aren't we? I might have to call in sick tomorrow. So it's open, we'll see how we go. So why are we here guys? We're here because of the Pub Public Health Amendment Bill 2022. Which is being voted on inside those walls by a bunch of criminals as we speak. It allows the continuous extension of the state of emergency when they're clearly, logically and scientifically is no emergency. It gives extra powers to the Chief Health Officer and Emergency Officers in relation to COVID-19, testing and quarantining and authorising other public health measures. Other public health measures, what does that mean? We're being set up. There is no emergency. See, so these are the steps we've taken so far. Our first step was to raise thousands of submissions in opposition to the bill. We had over 10,000 signatures on the TPR letter to the committee. Now, the committee we sent it to is called the Community Services that's wrong. It's called the Community Support and Services Committee, CSSC. Originally, the committee that was in charge of this thing, of this thing of the public, the public uh, hearing and the putting table in the report, was called the public. Not the public. What was it called, guys? Someone must. Well, I told you last week. <laughs> the Health Committee. The Health Committee. There were six members on the Health Committee. Three of them were communist. I mean, Labor MPs. One of them was a One Nation MP, and two of them were Liberal LNPs. Now, I had a chat to one of the One Nation guys, and to a Federal LNP member, and we came up with a plan, we were going to block the, ball, block the bill inside those walls. The next day after the conversation, the Health Committee was bounced off and replaced with the CSSC. They knew things were going to go down and it was going to get blocked. They've had it rigged from the start, right? So we know what we're doing here is it's going to be a hard task. But it's possible, and that's why we're here. We raised 4,500 personal submissions. And that was all done within 24 hours. So next time with a bit more notice, we're going to rock it. And I actually read the committee's report where they mentioned the submissions. And I read some of the submissions. And hats off to you, the committee had to pay attention to it because close to 100% of those submissions they received were, were very well written and against that bill. And they, met, they made mention of special submissions in their report detailing government statistics, ABS statistics, which they can't ignore because it's their own, it's their own, it's their own gear. So some years did a really good job, guys. Hats off.
Now, after the closing date of the submissions, it is brought to our attention that only 1,500 submissions were being considered by the committee. So the TPR team contacted the CWSC to find out what the goal is. They explained that the majority of the submissions were duplicates and irrelevant. Well, we said that's impossible because the form that we made for people to fill out had a blank field for people to type in their submissions. It was impossible for there to be duplicates in there. And the fact that everybody wrote in means they are relevant. So the committee got back to us a few days later and they seated and they said, we're going to accept your submissions. However, they stated that 1,500 of those were either from interstate and couldn't be accepted, which is legitimate. We probably should explain that. That's probably our, our mistake for not making that clear. Where it's a state bill, the submissions can only be accepted from within that state. So my apologies for that, guys. And apparently there were duplicates. And I do believe that because I know people here would be going, you know what, I'm just going to write this out a few times and instead of me being one, I'll be five. But what happens is, not only are those four duplicates not counted, your original one's not counted either, so it works against us. And some of them are abusive, apparently, and so they won't be included. So guys, keep it clean, stay on task, put it to them, be firm. But as soon as you use profanities, it's an excuse. For, they want to get rid of them all. As soon as they find an excuse, they'll get rid of them. So just, yeah, keep your wits about when you're writing those things. Our next step was a four-day protest here at Parliament. Who came here for that? Warriors. You weren't there. The first day being when the public hearing was being heard in the walls, we made so much noise. I saw video clips of those guys in there complaining that they couldn't even think straight. <laughs> Jimmy, 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 bring that drum over. I think it's about time that we just let them know we're here, right? Eh? Let's make sure they know we're here.
sophomore saying we made so much noise they couldn't hear themselves thinking there. Many reports are coming in, they're pissed off already. You know, it's interesting, if you look at this, look at the, uh, this patio, this, the closest structure to us on the top level, and the window to your right hand side, the furthest right, look at the bottom of it, can you see anything interesting there? Have well, I explained that rule? Nobody's given me the answer yet. This balcony here, that window on the right hand side, so look at the bottom of it. The board ended up. <laughs> it was already like that last time. <laughs> it's already like that again. It's only one window, so maybe we're not making enough noise. They ready? Next time we come back, they're going to be all boarded up, I think. That's probably where the last MP got thrown out, maybe. Alright, so the next step is we launched a personal pressure campaign on the MPs taking a vote on the bill. Now, I know for a fact that when they get a large number of calls and emails about a single issue, it does become unnerving for them, and that's straight from the horse's mouth. The pressure campaigns work. Some people say they don't. I know they do. So next time this comes around, guys, take some time. Make sure you call as many MPs and emails as you can. Because the template, the template letters and all that sort of stuff, they don't work. Because yeah, they end up just blocking them. Yeah. So you gotta, it's got to be authentic, it's got to be original. It takes more time, but it's effective. In some aspect, it's effective. We're not going to change the world, world by writing emails, but it plays its part. Yeah, for this, for this bill, guys, we're going to need five or six communists, I mean Labour MPs, to cross the floor and vote no against this bill to knock this one over. Now that is a big ask. But we are in massively uncertain times and each day more people are waking up to what is taking place and their line is being drawn in the sand. Let's hope enough lines have been drawn in the sand over this bill. We're about to find out. Now, this is the perfect time to reiterate that the politicians, the political parties, and the political system are the reason why we're in this mess together. Do not be mistaken. The system was not designed for the people. The system is not for the people. The blacks found that out when the system came over here 250 years ago. Now we're finding out. It's the same system. They don't care about us, guys. We care about each other. The floods are a perfect example of that. Now that's not to say that there aren't some good people left in there. And that, and that there aren't some good people trying to get in there. But don't throw your hopes and dreams in with that mob because you'll be crushed repeatedly. If you want positive change, look to yourself. Look to your neighbours, look to your families, start building your communities. There is no other way we're going to win this war. It's with communities. We create our own systems outside their system. That is the way forward. And again, guys, that's not to say that we can't use the political system or we can't use the legal system. They're both corrupt as hell. But that's not to say we can't achieve small things to help us along the way. Just don't throw your hopes and dreams at it. Empowering communities, becoming self-sufficient and self-reliant. Like I said, who does that come down to? You. And you, the brother. You, 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 all of you guys in this crowd. All of you guys. You are all powerful. Each and every single person here. And I'll take my glasses off and look at you all in the eye here today. Each and every person on here, I'm looking at all of you guys. You are powerful individuals. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. You have the ability to make the change required in this world for our future generations. You do. You have the ability to shape this world into a world that's fit 
for the future generations. It's not fit for use at the moment. We have to make change. We have to make sacrifices. That's everybody here. You think turning up here is going to make the change we need? It's not. You think turning up on a Saturday in a rally in the park on a sunny Saturday afternoon is going to make the change we need? It's not. They all play the part. They all provide positive things along the way. The rallies on a Saturday. You leave from that, you're on a high for a couple of days after that. The morale is soaring. We create momentum. We build the numbers. We spread awareness. And that is pivotal. In any war, all those things are needed. But it means nothing if you don't use it going forward. So use what we achieved there together and push forward with it. Well, we just got word, guys. The bill will be voted on today. It's going to start this afternoon. Actually, let me rephrase that. It's going to start this afternoon. The debate could go to Thursday. Who knows? This is the bit. It's a pretty important bill. There's a lot of public pressure on it. There's a lot of pressure from politicians and federal politicians on these guys too. So there's no guarantee uh, that it will be decided on today. I said guys that each one here has the ability to make the change that we need in this world. Who believes that? Yes, yes. That's about fifty percent. I said, who believes that? Yes. Put your hands in the air guys and repeat after me. If you know that you are gonna make the change that this world needs. and ask yourself, why are we such a diverse group? Because we've, we have forgotten our differences that come together. When we're sitting here together, no one cares about your personal issues. It's all left behind. Because we're here fighting, fighting a common enemy, but we're trying to reach for a common goal. It's the flag. I remind you, the black arm and the white arm, it symbolises people's perceived differences. They start off separate, and they flow down into the middle, uniting. When they unite, they create the lion. The lion is the symbol of power and strength. The fingers are in the shape of the V. The V is for victory and peace. So overall, you have people forgetting their perceived differences, coming together to create a powerful and strong unit. And through that powerful and strong unit, we will achieve victory through peace. That's what this is about. Now we're here because the minds which have showed resilience against the brainwashing. We can see a, we can see clear government overreach based on sinister reasoning. Yeah. Yeah. X-ray vision goggles. <laughs> We've got <laughs> We've got Western democratic countries.
They're not really democratic, democratic countries anymore. We've got Trudeau in Canada freezing bank accounts of protesters. Yeah. Let me hear what he thinks about Justin Trudeau. It's no longer a democratic country. It's a dictatorship. There is no other way to describe that country. And we're on the, we're on the doorstep. In fact, I think you could almost pretty much call us a dictatorship. Now, Eastern European countries that have experienced heavy war for long periods of time, sometimes under the rule of communism, dictatorship, they're calling all of these Western countries out there. They're calling out Canada and Trudeau. They're calling out Australia, especially down in Melbourne. These guys have been through it. During each rally, I have multiple old school Eastern Europeans that come to me and they say, Tricky, we fled communism in our country. That's why we came to Australia. We can see it happening now in Australia. It's happening now. We escaped it and we're seeing it now. That's a warning from people that have lived through it and their families ran from it and now they're about to run again. That's a wake-up call. For all those Muppets that sit at home watching fucking, excuse me, watching football, having to be on a Friday night because you can't be stuffed doing anything, this is a wake-up call to you. Straight from the horse's mouth. People that have run from communism are now escaping it again. Wake up and start helping your brothers and sisters. There's members of parliament in Croatia that have called out the Western so-called democratic countries. I want to read out this little paragraph here. Well, I didn't write his name down. My, my apologies to the uh, Croatian brother. I've forgotten your name. Dear colleagues, dear citizens, and dear Prime Minister Trudeau. Trudeau is sitting right behind him as he reads this out and he faces to turn him at certain points during his speech. Freedom, the right to choose, the right to life, the right to health, the right to work, for many of us, are fundamental rights for which millions of citizens of Europe and the world have laid down their lives. To defend our rights and the rights of our children, we have acquired over the centuries, many of us, including myself, are willing, are willing to risk our freedom and our own lives. Unfortunately, today, there are those among us who trample on these fundamental values. Canada, once a symbol of the modern world, has become a symbol of civil right violations under your quasi-liberal boot in recent months. We watched how you trample women with horses, how you block the bank accounts of single parents that they can't even pay their children's education and medicine, that they can't pay utilities, and mortgages for the homes. To you, these may be liberal methods. For many citizens of the world, it is a dictatorship of the worst kind. Now check out this, check out this. Rest assured that the citizens of the world united can stop any regime that wants to destroy the freedom of citizens either by bombs or by harmful pharmaceutical products. We are coming! We're here because we're under attack from many angles. Now whether the floods were an act of mother nature or helped along with cloud seeding. And if anyone up here or anyone in these live camera feeds, any of you fools up there in that building, actually you know, what am I talking about, you know. 
Cloud seeding is a government operation. It's openly discussed. It is not a conspiracy. If you don't believe me, how about you spend some time and go look at it yourself? All you guys know. Cloud seeding. They manipulate the weather. If you haven't heard it, you've heard it here now. Now, whether it was Mother Nature or whether cloud seeding helped it flood even a little bit more, the government did not respond until it was too late on purpose. The military did not respond until it was too late on purpose. It was you guys. It was the people helping the people. It was the people in, in Tinnies. It was the people paying for helicopters to make rescues. It was the people buying generators and fuel and food and water. What the hell were these guys? Absolute disgrace. The Australian government and every other state government in this country is an absolute disgrace. It pisses me off that we have to put up with this rubbish. Everybody needs to start getting up and tell them to get out. They waited. They waited and they waited and they waited. Meanwhile, there's families, groups of families stuck on roofs with babies. 19 hours at a time, no breast milk, because mama doesn't have breast milk, there's no formula. That baby could have died. And we're sitting here putting up with it. We should go down, no, pull that one back. You know what I mean, all right? This is all the more reason we have to make more sacrifices and get together and push hard now. They're leaving the people to die. Literally, leaving them to die. Now there's a government buyback scheme down there. I wonder why the government would want to buy back that area. Well, maybe, maybe. It's interesting though. The dots are starting to line up here. I'm gonna chuck it over to Dylan. He was down there helping out. He saw it in the flesh. I want him to give us a recall, first-hand recall of what he saw. Now, eventually the military did get there. Young boys standing around with the you-know-whats in the hand. They didn't know what to do. They weren't interested. Hang on, I, I saw them. They were doing great work. They were doing great work, he says. Once they got going, right? Once Too late. They got going. Too late. That's what I was saying. They came down, they came with their film crews. After the hard work had been done, Obviously there's still more hard work to go. They came with their film crews and they were more occupied filming themselves to put it on social media. And I'm not talking the little boys with their cameras and the army filming each other. I'm talking about proper broadcast quality army news media. Filming the guys, put stuff in the trailers, take it out, do another take. Propaganda. Absolute rubbish. Wardell it's important. Woodburn. And this is the thing guys, we know this. We need to get it out to those people. We need to find ways to do that. Yes, letterbox drops are effective. And we can all chip in and we can all chip in with money and time. You take your dog for a walk, you put some letterbox drops in. But we need big players to start stepping up with big amounts of money. Radio stations, TV stations, billboards. It's always, it's always us, it's always the, uh, the middle class man that's fighting the war, right? Where's all these big players? They talk the talk. But when it comes down to it, they don't even use their own money for the good. It's only if, 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 it, if it helps them. Oh, Clive Palmer throws his money around only to help himself. Sorry to break it to you. He puts up billboards to promote, promote himself. Why doesn't he put up billboards to wake the masses up? Then we're going to get there faster. Selfish. Bad luck, Clivey. Bad luck. Like I said, the politicians, the political parties and the political system are in it for themselves. They're the whole reason we're in this mess. Let's fight together. It's the only way forward. Where's Dylan? Hey, I'd like to speak. I'd like to speak. I'd like to speak. You went down there. Come on, chat. Okay, yeah.
Guys, we have donation tins here. At the, at the five day event we put on a few weeks ago, we spent just about 10 grand. We made, we've, we made back about seven and a half, so short about two and a half grand. Red, where are they gonna be? This lovely woman here who works a butt off. She was probably up to about 3.30, they reckon. 3.30 in the morning, doing the merch. Sort all the merch out and the sizes and all that. She, she really works hard, guys. Give her a clap. Give Nelly a clap. Thank you, Nelly. So she's going to walk around the red tin, and there's more donation tins behind us. Now, Nelly, can we, can we get one more of those tins? Has one from that flood ring on it still? Okay. Can we one of those tins dedicated to the floods? Just bright flood on it. One of those girls at the back, can you get a black texter now and write flood on one of the red tins? Now we, we sent a tin around last, in the last four days, it was only like 1,600 bucks. Come on man, there's a few more of us here. Even if we put like five bucks in each, there's gonna be a lot more than that. TPR will chuck in some of ours too, right? Now, come on bro. This man turned up on one of the rallies with his camera sent me some footage, and it was bloody good. There's a weapon. In every war, there's different types of weapons. This old man has a weapon with a camera. Hey. Thanks, Tricky. I went down there to the floods, and I went with my camera. I went with a car load of relief supplies that were donated up on the Sunshine Coast. I actually wasn't planning on that. It was just that the people were standing there with these piles of things People's hearts were opening, they were handing out whatever they had to, for the victims down there. And I said, okay, I'll take, take a load down. So I went down to Mullumbimby and I found the people all self-organising. There was no government, there was no anything other than some council workers were out there trying to clean the streets a bit in Mullumbimby. And then I dropped the supplies off and then I was told about the effects of the floods down on the Richmond River at Korokai, at Wardell, and at Woodburn, and of course Lismore. Lismore was a mess. I went into Lismore and it was like a rubbish dump. It really is sad. And the people, the military, I've got to just say one thing about the military. They were there, and they, I went in there and I filmed alongside them. The boys that were there, they'd come from Townsville, and they'd come from Brisbane, and they were really good, and they were very dedicated, and they were very disciplined. They were really good Australians. They were there with their hearts, with their energy, and they wanted to help. The problem was on the political level. Scumbag had taken a break, and it wasn't until Scumbag came back from his break that uh, it seemed like things began to move a little bit. But all those military guys that were down there, they were there full tilt and they were there to help. And then, but the most amazing thing I found, and I've made a film about this, and I want you to look it up, it's on YouTube. It's called The Spirit of Australia. The, uh, the Spirit of Australia in the Northern New South Wales Flood Recovery. It's on YouTube. The Spirit of Australia in the Northern New South Wales Flood Recovery. Go and have a look at that, and you'll see what was going on amongst the people. I don't have to t stand here and tell you, you can see it, because they speak for themselves. They are a mighty bunch of people, the same as you are. Everybody helping each other. And that's the way it works for us. It doesn't count on the politicians. They came for the photo opportunities and disappeared. But the people were there. People came, there was a, a man from Gold Coast, a race car driver, he had a fantastic trailer. And he filled it up with barbecue and got rid of the, the car, filled it up with food, and went down to Korokai and feeding everybody in the town. There was another guy, uh, and he's in my film, uh, Darius, Darius Mignardis, a Greek guy, who just felt he had to go down from Brisbane. And he paid for all the food supplies, and he cooked, and he cooked, and he cooked, and anybody that came, he would feed them. And then more people came and helped him. So the spirit of Australia is very, very, very alive. It, this COVID thing, did not kill that. It did not reduce it. The spirit is strong and it's in all of us. And I really want to thank you because I've been to a number of these gatherings over the last six months 
what I've noticed was the most common thing I've noticed in all of the, t the gatherings is goodwill and intelligence. You are a mighty bunch of people and I'm proud to be a member of the Australian community. Thank you. But the point of those stories was to show, like I said, the military didn't help, the government didn't help until it was too late. The community, I'm trying to drum that into you. So I'm hoping that most are now starting to see the way forward is through communities. Okay, let's which is why TPR has created a platform called TPR Connect. These groups are aimed at strengthening, them, strengthening the communities as the first step in creating our own society. Before I get into that, guys, apparently this bill's going to start getting discussed, discussed after lunch. So I suggest that about midday, we go through a march through the city. Well, we don't have to, you don't sound very excited. Should we go for a march or? Hopefully it's raining and we can march in the rain for the first time. We're looking forward to that. So we'll go for a march in the rain at midday. We'll come back into here. Is there food guys here? I haven't even checked this place out yet. There's a food gazebo behind us on your right hand side. When we come back in, we might, depending on what you guys want to do, we can turn the audio on and listen to what they have to say. We can do that. We tried it last time with the public hearing and it lasted about 15 seconds and I pulled the plug because it was just there. <laughs> but this is the actual discussion of the bill, so we'll, ch we'll chuck it on if you guys want and we'll see how we go. As soon as you get bored, as soon as half the crowd sticks their hand in the air, we'll pull the plug. The first TTR Connect group, guys, and I want you to just think about these. Not all of them will appeal to you, but some of them we, we get pushed closer to death. One day we're dead, we're gone. So we can kick and scream. They don't, they'll put up with us. We're gone. They care what's on this side of the world, and that's our kids and the future generations. They're going for them early in the schools. Because once they condition them, they're turning them against the parents. The they're completely they're undermining the parent authority the and the, parent, the family values, and they're going for our kids. Let's refocus on this and start educating our kids, and we'll condition our kids with the love and truth and condition them to think freely. We're not brainwashing them, we're conditioning them to always think objectively and ask questions until you're satisfied that you're doing the right thing or that the right thing is happening around you. And if not, you stand up and do something about it. You make the change. That's the TTR Connect Youth Group's most, probably the most important group. Can everybody still hear all right? Yeah. The guys in the front are screaming yes, I bloody know you can hear. <laughs> TPR Connect Business Owners Group. Creating business alliances and hosting legal information sessions. You know, again guys, we all know the story about Cafe No Ego. We all heard. The cops went down there and harassed them and liquor licenses went down there and harassed them because they were continuing to serve people of all descriptions, blacks and whites, rich and poor, Muslims are Christians, and vaccinated and unvaccinated. For refusing to play a part in the apartheid that has now taken hold of this country. Nah, I'm gonna like it, yeah, it feels good. For refusing to play a part in the apartheid, these guys harassed and they were tried to get shut down, just like many other cafes. So when we heard about this, we turned up there with a few hundred people, we made a human barricade, and for that one day, the cops stayed away. When they drove past for the first time, we were doing a practice drill of linking arms and they drove past right at that time and they, it was a funny look on the face as they drove past, it was quite humorous. But that's an example of what we can do when we put our minds to it. You know, you can't expect the same 300 people to drive all over the country when they need to. Business alliances, business owners connecting with business owners, getting rid of that old mentality where it's dog eat dog and creating alliances, trying to help each other. Maybe they have to share profits for a while to survive. That's what life is about, right? Sharing, that village community. If you're trying to smack each other out, guess what? You're gonna get smacked out one day too. TPR Connect industry groups. Connecting people within specific industries such as education, healthcare, logistics, and the trades. Now that sounds like a familiar theory, like a uh, union. The problem with the majority of unions are they're corrupt. And they'll take your money with one hand and they'll do just enough to make you think that the that they're working for you. When a push comes to shove, they'll throw you under a bus. 
because they're taking brown paper bags under the table as well. Now there are exceptions to this rule. There are some good unions out there still. Just like the politicians, but very few only. So, the industry group, it's free. You sign up to it, we put you in your specific sectors, and over time, if we build this up, and this is what it comes to, I, I can't build this up myself, it's, it has to be you guys. You build this up for free, you create a trade union, and it's all encompassing all trades. All of a sudden, the chippies have shitty work conditions. Sorry, I'll keep, you know. To me, SHIT is a swear word, but for many people it is, so I'll try and tone it down. Many of those chippies will, will come under pressure at one stage. The whole trade union gets together, and they act. It doesn't cost us anything to be in that union. It just creates, it, you just have to make a sacrifice when the time comes. You have to be non-selfish because it might not be a turn right at the front. But if you don't join the chippies, maybe the sparkies won't join, the, join you later, you know? Does that explain well enough? You understand what I'm getting at here? And it comes down to you guys jumping on it, spreading it around, getting people to sign up. We put you in a forum of your own people and you work it out amongst yourselves. Hey, listen, this is happening in our, in our industry. Oh, everybody get on board, bang. All of a sudden they've got 5,000 people turn up on the doorstep. Shut them down. And it's not industrial action. You take sick leave. Or if you're casual, you just leave for a few days. There's ways around it. TPR connect to political groups. Connecting politically active people. Again, don't mistake this for me promoting politics. It's about political pressure groups. Like what we're doing today. Groups get amongst yourselves. Start hitting your local MPs every day and go speak to them. Order an interview, uh, an appointment I should say, and go in for your appointment and lay it down, thick, and get them on side. Good luck with that. <laughs> TPR Connect Social. Connecting people to the local support groups so you know you are never alone. Yeah guys, the community bond is what is gonna take us forward through this, these hard times that are coming. Fuel prices are going through the roof. They're not gonna stop. You're going to keep coming. Groceries, and I didn't know this because I don't do the grocery shopping. My missus does. And I get angry at her, hey, yeah, spending too much money. <laughs> and then she goes, the groceries have increased. It's about 60 bucks a week extra all of a sudden. $60 a week plus a dollar extra for fuel, that's breaking families already. And they're not going to stop. They're going to keep coming. Get ready, guys. TPR community groups, social, start visiting your neighbours, start helping each other build veggie patches, start putting in water tanks, start teaching each other the skills that you know, and get together, have barbecues, create the love, create the bond, and start relying on each other. Because if you don't rely on each other, you can't survive in this world without relying on other people, you can't. If you've got to rely on them, you're buggered. And many of us are relying on the system at the moment. Many of us are. We have to go to the supermarket still, eating their poison food, GMO food, additive filled food, rubbish. We're not living in the right way, we need change. TPR Connect Community School Groups. Connecting teachers, parents and students. We're now living in a world where vac vaccines and mask wearing is mandatory for kids to go to school in certain areas, in certain sections. We're now living in a world where the school system is brainwashing and conditioning our kids. Doesn't it make now perfect sense to go back how it was originally intended and for communities to start raising their kids together? Obviously we're still stuck. We still need money. We're not there yet, we're a long way off. We still need money. So when one parent goes to work, the other neighbourhood families that don't have to on that day, or they're covered for some other reason, they help, and all the kids go there. It might be three kids, it might be 15 kids. Build your carports into a classroom style setup. Start educating your children from home. With, with less kids in the classroom, they get taught what they can learn in a school in a fifth of the time. Then you can teach them real stuff. There's many different ways, you know, distance education, homeschool, Unedu what's it called? Unschooling. All these different ways. Find out what suits yourselves and go hard. The children are the future. Let's, let's start treating them like precious kids that they are.